so hello everyone my name is hemu and i am i have just started this palo alto and panorama free interview question and answer series so let me just tell you how i am going to deliver this particular training so guys this training i have started from today today is 18th of jan and i will basically i am taking continuous session till 27th of jan basically okay there is a on saturday and sunday there is no class so guys saturday sunday is week off and apart from that basically so we will be having classes on 18 19 20 then 23 24 25 26 and 27 and i am i am planning to complete around 100 questions which is most frequent asked by the interviewers in your palo alto and panorama interview basically okay and guys also one more thing if you have any type of questions right and if you want me to cover such kind of question you can always send these questions on my whatsapp number this is my whatsapp number 90 19 2 3 4 5 6 Two nine one five. This is my WhatsApp number, so you can always reach out to me on this number. Okay. Apart from this, I will record these particular trainings, and guys, all the recordings is available through our video portal, which is this one here. We I will we we are having already one course for Palo Alto interview series, so I am going to put all these particular. videos or particular recordings into that particular course okay so you will get all the recording into this one palo alto firewall interview question and answers here okay so you have to download our application now let me just start with your first question so i have made the list of few questions guys so let me just go with the first question so initially we will focus on your panorama questions basically right so generally first question is asked by the interviewer in your interview like how to manage multiple palo alto firewalls from central location basically central location mean let's suppose you have a you have a this kind of environment where you have around 10 data centers across the globe on these 10 data centers you have Two to Palo Alto. Let's suppose you are having here fifty to twenty series box. So total twenty firewalls you are having here. They are you are running these firewalls in H, active passive in most of the time. And apart from the let's suppose you have some branches, and you have let's suppose around thirty branches or more than that. And in these thirty branches, let's suppose you are having eight twenty Palo Alto box. and these branches also you are running in active passive mode means you have around 60 firewalls here right and you have 20 firewalls here so total you have around 80 firewalls now how you will manage all these devices from one central location so the answer for this question is you have to opt for the panorama solution from palo alto panorama is a device who can manage your Palo Alto firewalls from central location. It will provide you the single point of contact for managing all your Palo Alto firewalls. What type of management you can able to do? You can able to do the config management. Means you can able to manage the configuration part of your Palo Alto firewall, which includes your security policies, your routing details, your interface configuration, all such kind of things. it will also offer you the you can also able to maintain the pan os upgrades and your dynamic upgrades and downgrades part so this type of benefit also you will get with the help of this particular panorama solution right we will discuss these benefits in details so guys let's suppose if you have a such kind of environment where i have a firewalls right i have these many firewalls on my environment and i want to manage them through central location for that we have to to opt for the panorama solution okay sometime you will also see such kind of deployment right where you will have some firewalls in your data centers some firewalls you have into some remote locations right 
you have some firewalls into your regional office and some firewalls you have in branches and some firewalls you have in your headquarters and if you want to do the management of all these devices you have to do through this particular device which is known as palo, palo, palo alto panorama so the answer of your first question is we have to go for the palo alto panorama solution from palo alto so this is the answer of your first question how to manage multiple palo alto firewall from central location now now the second question which is most frequently asked in the interview what is panorama what do you understand with the panorama solution so you have to answer like panorama is a device who can manage your Palo Alto firewalls. So let's suppose whatever Palo Alto firewalls you are having, it will help you to manage all these Palo Alto firewalls. If you have a dedicated log collectors, you can run Panorama as a log collector as well, right? If you have a multiple log collectors, means you can also able to manage these log collectors from Panorama. Let's suppose you have opt for the Prisma. Sessi solution, then you can also able to integrate your Prisma Sessi solution with Panorama and you can able to manage. And let's suppose you have some wildfire appliance, WF500 appliance. You can also able to manage and control these particular appliance with the help of Panorama. Let's suppose you have some URL filtering like PanDB device and your infrastructure, then you can also able to control the URL filtering solution just through this particular device. So Panorama is a management server for your Palo Alto firewalls, for your log collectors, for your wildfire appliances. So this is the definition of your Panorama. Panorama is you you will you will be getting like hardware boxes as well for Panorama, and you can also able to implement the virtual machines of this particular Panorama. These VMs you can able to install into your private cloud. Let's suppose you have some virtual environment in your organization, right? In your data center, you can able to spin the Panorama VM there. Even though Panorama is, you can also able to spin this on public cloud, like your Alibaba cloud, Google cloud, Amazon web server, which is AWS cloud, your Azure cloud, your Oracle cloud, right? In these particular cloud platforms also, you can able to put this particular or you can able to spend the panorama solution so this is the answer of your second question if you will go here and if i will tell you more about this what is panorama so panorama offers you the central configuration management which includes your network and device related configuration with the help of templates you can able to control the object and security policies with the help of device group. Even though you can also able to control the software upgrades, means these firewalls, operating system upgrade, downgrade, this thing you can able to control. You can able to control the dynamic, dynamic updates for your application signatures for your antivirus signatures for your wildfire signatures right you can able to install them you can able to downgrade them A everything you can able to do even though you can also able to control the licensing of your palo alto firewalls means licensing management there's a one more thing you can able to do which is the central log management means you can send all these logs to this particular panorama device where you will get the entire visibility of your network let's suppose there is a one malware which is installed in which is basically affected around 50 sites or 20 sites right and if you want to see the list of these sites you will get you can get the reports through this panorama means you will get the central centralized log management cap capability as well if you have this particular solution so these are the some benefit of panorama if you have in your environment even though you can also able to achieve the central device administration means you can let's suppose you have some l3 engineers right you can just provide the access 
of this particular panorama device means they can able to control the things from here. Let's say you have some local admins in your branches and your data centers, right? So these local admins, they can only allow to make the changes either on your data center firewalls, either in your branch office firewalls locally, right? So such kind of control also you are going, you will be getting with the help of Panorama. So this is the answer of your second question. If somebody is asking, what is Panorama? Now, let's move towards the third question, which is, what are the benefit of Panorama? What are the key areas in which Panorama adds value? Means the main benefit of your Panorama, you are getting centralized configuration management and deployment management. You are getting aggregate logging and reporting functionality, and you are getting distributive administration. So these are the three key areas where your Panorama adds the value in your Palo Alto solution basically, if you are having in your infrastructure. So this is the answer of your third question. Now, let's try to understand the question number four, which is, which is what are the panorama deployment type in products environment basically it means how we can deploy this panorama solution in products environment. What type of deployment is available basically? So. Panorama support two types of deployment. There is a one basic deployment. And the second one is your distributive deployment. So these are the two deployment which is supported by the Panorama. Now let's try to understand these deployment in detail basically. So if you will see this particular diagram where we have a basic deployment or this deployment is also known as a standalone deployment. And the second one is distributed deployment. Now, what is the main difference between basic deployment and distributive deployment? So guys, if you will see here, here I am just having one panorama. Even though in basic deployment, you will be having here two panoramas as well. And you are running these panoramas in HA. One panorama we have as an active primary and the second panorama we have as a active secondary. Means it is a some type of active passive deployment. Okay, now in basic deployment guys, this particular panorama, it is responsible for your configuration management and also it is responsible for your log management. Means these managed devices, they will send their logs to this particular panorama device. So like if you have a four firewalls in your infrastructure or you have a six firewalls or you have a 10 firewalls, if you just have a small deployment, right? Not so many devices you are having in your infrastructure. In that case, you have to go for the basic deployment. But in the other side, let's suppose if you have a lots of firewall means you have a hundred firewalls or you have a 200 firewall, so you have a 2000 firewall, so you have a 5000 firewalls. It will support up to 5000 firewalls, guys. If you have a such kind of number, in this case, what you have to do, you have to go for the distributed deployment, guys. In distributed deployment, you, are, you, will, you can see here, I have one panorama here, and I have some log collector means, I have a dedicated devices who is doing the log collection basically. And these are the devices also, they are the some panorama devices only. But this panorama devices we are running in a, in a log collector mode means they just collect the log which is coming from these particular firewalls. So these particular log collector devices, they will collect the log and this particular panorama, we will be using to manage the configuration of your firewalls, to manage the configuration of your log collectors. And if you want to generate some reports, what you can do, you can also query to these log collectors and 
your panorama will send the query to these log collectors and you will get the reports basically so that's how your distributed deployment works in distributed deployment we have a multiple panorama devices where one panorama or either two panorama which we are running in ha is responsible for the configuration management and apart from this we are having some log collectors or we are running some panorama in a log collector mode and who is responsible for log management whatever logs coming from these managed devices so these are the two deployment method which is supported by your panorama now let's try to understand here as well now in some organization guys maybe this particular panorama we are using just for the config management of your devices so this panorama can be a virtual machine as well and these panoramas which we are using for log collector these are the some m series appliances these are the some panorama hardware appliances we can able to create multiple groups like log collector group a log collector group b and log collector group c let's suppose this log collector a responsible for collecting all the logs from your data center devices maybe log collector b is responsible for collecting the logs from your branch office firewalls and log collector c may be responsible for collecting the logs from your headquarter devices so it used to support such kind of deployment method guys in your panorama okay now let's try to understand the next question which is what are the hardware appliances available for panorama what are the hardware devices available for panorama guys now let's try to understand this part so if i will i will mention some hardware box of your panorama so the hardware box name of your panorama is started with m series means whatever devices you will see for panorama they are the m series devices of your palo alto the first panorama hardware box is your m100 after that they have created new box which is m200 then they have created a one more box which is m500 they have created one more box which is m600 and guys now this box is end of life and end of sale apart from the recently they have introduced two more series which is m300 series and m700 series guys so if you have a lots of devices like if you have 5000 devices or you have around 4000 kind of devices 4000 kind of palo alto firewalls i will highly recommend either you can go for m600 either you can go for m700 series box so these are the some hardware devices of your palo alto palo alto panorama solutions now if i'll go here if you want to see the picture of these boxes so your m700 box looks like this this is the hardware appliance of your m700 series this is the hardware appliance of your m600 series box this is the hardware appliance of your m500 series box this is the hardware appliance of your m300 series then we have a m200 series and we have a m100 series guys and if you want to check out the capacity all these things you can you have to reach out to the palo alto and you can check the palo alto data sheets for that so these are the hardware boxes which is available for panorama solutions now let's try to understand what are the operational modes and this is the most asked interview question guys means what type of mode is supported by panorama like in palo alto you know what type of interface is supported by palo alto like layer 3 interface tap mode tap mode interface ha type interface right in similar way panorama also we can run into some modes basically and if i will write down the modes of this panorama so the first mode of your panorama or whenever you have a hardware box the box generally runs in a panorama mode this is the first mode the 
the second mode of your panorama is management only mode the third mode of your panorama is log collector mode or i can say logger mode and the fourth one is legacy mode now this legacy mode is only supported by the panorama with which you are running in virtual machines and it has a version less than 8.0 whatever versions is starting from 8.0 onwards this legacy mode is not supported so these are the four modes of your panorama and if you really wants to check in which mode your panorama is running you have to run this command so system info match run this command mode and you will get here panorama system mode is right now i'm running my panorama in system mode so the best command is this when you can run this command with the match option of this and you will get the panorama mode and if you want to change the mode you can run this command request system system mode and you can see you can change the mode from panorama to management only or you can change the mode from panorama to logger now guys here you have to just remember something let's suppose your panorama you are running right now in logger mode or let's suppose you are your you are running your panorama in legacy mode this is just a legacy mode where you are running your panorama and here you have your panorama mode and here i am having my management mode and here i have my logger mode or log collector mode now guys just remember one thing from legacy mode you can able to go to panorama mode from legacy mode you can able to go to management mode from panorama mode you can able to go to management mode and from management mode to panorama mode is also possible means you can able to convert them from panorama you can able to go to log collector mode but and from log collector mode you can go to panorama mode but guys from management mode you cannot able to go to log collector mode so this is a one thing you have to remember from management mode you cannot able to go back to legacy mode or from panorama you cannot able to go back to legacy mode so this thing you have to guys remember okay this is also this is also an interview question which is asked by the interviewer multiple times even though in your pcnc exams also this particular question used to come now now guys one more thing you have to remember your hardware devices your physical appliances they will not support this legacy mode so you generally they will come with the panorama mode this is the default mode if you want to convert you can convert to log collector you can able to convert to management from management also you can able to go to panorama mode from log collector you can go to panorama mode but your virtual appliances you can run on panorama mode log collector mode management only and legacy but this is only supported on pan os version pan os 8.0 versions like whatever versions you have below than pan 8.0 now guys just remember one thing if you are running your panorama in panorama mode which means you can able to do the config management and you can also able to do the log management if you are running your panorama in log collector mode you can only able to do the log management 
and if you are running your panorama in management only mode then time you can only able to do the config management config management device deployment here also i can write the device deployment these things but in management mode if any firewall forward the logs towards the panorama it will drop all the logs this logging capability is not available in the panorama which you are running in management mode just remember so i hope guys difference is also clear between these three modes yes or no on the chat so i will get you are getting or you have any doubts okay i got lots of yes okay that's cool now let's move towards the next question So guys, now what is panorama? I have already already explained what is panorama mode. Panorama mode is a mode of your panorama which supports the configuration management. Means you can able to manage the configuration in your Palo Alto devices into your wildfire appliances. You can also able or your Palo Alto firewall they can also able to send the logs. towards your panorama in management mode as i add, as i said you are only see the capability of configuration management your log collection capability is not available in the panorama in logger mode log collection capability is available but this config management capability is not available here now this is a very very important question which is asked by multiple interviews like how does panorama address new logs when it reach the maximum log storage what is the answer guys what you will think here if anyone know just write on the chat what is the answer for this question if your panorama reach the maximum log capacity what it will do it used to start the purging of your old logs just remember so mohammed you have answered correctly what it will do it will delete the old logs it will start purging these old logs how this purging is happens this is a crones of guys which runs by the panorama systems automatically okay now let's try to understand guys this question let's suppose you are designing the panorama solution now how you will do the network segmentation if you are if somebody if you are decided to create a hld and nld or if if how you will basically do the network segmentation right because you know if i will just go here if you remember i have just told these things right this panorama this panorama box what it can do it can able to do the config management it can also able to do the log management it can also able to manage your software deployment your dynamic updates deployment right these are the main functionalities of your panorama now let's suppose what you did you have this one interface in your panorama let's so this is the interface which is available in your panorama let's so this is a management interface of your panorama now if through this interface if you will forward all the traffic let's suppose you are doing the config management of your all your parallel to firewall let's so you have a thousand parallel to firewalls which you are managing means 
you are going to push some configuration into all these firewalls through the same port. Let's suppose these thousand devices, they are also forwarding the logs towards panorama through the same interface. This interface have some fixed bandwidth. Let's suppose it is having one Gbps of bandwidth. It can able to support around one Gbps of traffic. Now, in this panel, you have done some scheduling like at 12 a.m. exactly. What it will do, it will post the latest antivirus signature updates, your latest application signature updates, and latest wildfire signature updates, and latest threat signature updates. It can send these updates to words all the hunt thousand devices at 12 a.m. What will happen in that case? This interface go, got overutilized? Yes or no? Guys, in that case, what will happen? Definitely this interface got overutilized, right? Now, if this interface got overutilized, which means you will face some issue at the latency, you will see some jitter issue, right? Maybe this panorama lose the connectivity some of the devices as well because they, they used to send the polling, right? They used to do the polling with all the devices to just check the connectivity. But in this, in this case, what will happen? They will face such kind of issue, right? They lose the connectivity means you have created a very, very bad design. Your design is not optimal. So which means that's why. That's why guys, you have to understand the network segmentation properly. How you have to do the network segmentation. So now let's try to understand how we used to do the network segmentation. So guys, in your panorama box, generally what it comes with six interfaces. We have a management interface. M0 by 0. And we have a Ethernet 1 interface, Ethernet 2 interface, Ethernet 3 interface, Ethernet 4 interface, and Ethernet 5 interface. Means your panorama generally comes with total of six interfaces. Where M0 by 0 interface, your ETH 1 till 3. These interfaces have a throughput of 1 Gbps. And the interface which is Ethernet 4 and it 5, you will get here around 10 Gbps of throughput. Now guys, this panorama, it is offering few things. It can able to fetch the dynamic updates from the internet or which is your parallel from the parallel to update servers, right? It can also able to push these dynamic updates towards all your firewall. Let's suppose these devices you are having in your data centers and these devices, let's suppose you are having in your branches. That is sending these updates as well. Apart from these things, all your parallel to devices, they are sending the logs towards these log collector panorama, right? Now guys, tell me one thing. Which basically thing here, which process will take lots of bandwidth while fetching the information or while pushing anything? In most of the time, you log collectors, right? Which means the interface which we are having like ETH4 and ETH5, we will use for the log collectors stuff. Means we will connect your Ethernet 4 and 5 interface with the log collectors basically. Because you know, by using this Ethernet 4 and 5, we will do the management of these log collectors and we will do the log query of the traffic through this log collectors. So Ethernet 4 and 5, they are the 10 Gbps of links and we will use these links for the log collectors management and log query management. The interface which is Ethernet 3, 
we just use for software and content updates or your pen with softwares upgrade downgrade because you know in panorama you are going to download all the pen with latest pen with versions all the signatures from the palo alto update servers because you know your management interface is get the connect with the internet and you will use this management interface for the logging purpose in your panorama board you can able to take the shs of this panorama and you can take the graphical user interface access of this panorama and if you are having any type of automation tool you can also able to enable the api access of this particular panorama okay so these are the things which we can able to do with the help of management interface ethernet three interface we are using just for software and content updates means through this interface we will push all type of latest content updates and pan with versions updates towards these firewall because you know on this firewall we will not provide the direct internet access okay and your ethernet one and two interfaces we are going to use just for the management traffic means config management or we will do the config management user id distribution purpose we will use this particular enter ethernet two and three so this is how we have to do the network segmentation and guys just remember one thing all these interface they are the layer three interfaces how you will do the connection guys and how the connection works in the production environment let me just show you so let's suppose we have this particular panorama so what we generally used to do we used to have here one management switch and this management switch definitely it has some connectivity with your routers right and after that this router it has a somehow connectivity maybe with your data center through mpls any dcs right maybe it has a two connection this is one with dc1 and this is with your dc2 these are the mpls connections now what used to happen this management interface we will connect with one of the port here on the switch let's suppose we will put this port on vlan 10 and after that we will connect one more interface which is eth1 with next port which is f0 by 1 maybe we will put this interface on vlan 20 then next interface on vlan 30 at switch n Then at three on VLAN 40, Ethernet 4 on VLAN 50, and Ethernet 5 on VLAN 60. And what we will do, we will create the SBI on this particular switch. We will create the SBI for VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 and after that on this switch we will configure one route towards this particular router and that's how we will maintain the connectivity and because you know these are the layer 3 interfaces here just remember we have to take the we need here around six layer 3 domain or we need around here six layer 3 subnets that's how we will basically do the ip configuration and all I hope this thing is clear, guys, to everyone. Any questions, any doubt? Yes, no on the chat, please. Okay, that's cool. I got yes only. Okay, now let me just move towards the next question. So guys, I hope you will understand how you will do the network segmentation of your panorama. Okay, so I got one question from Mohammed. He's asking, what about the BMs? In BMs also, you will get the six interfaces, okay? I have the BM, if you run this command, so interface, 
I have a management Ethernet one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, there are some restrictions on your cloud VMs because you know in cloud we have to create a subnets and all. So that's why in cloud environment like your AWS environment or in your Azure environment, you have to check their latest document or guides how they are basically suggesting the deployment modes. I hope Mohammed, I answer your question, right? Okay, cool. No. Now let's try to understand what is the port number used for communication between panorama and managed firewalls means, you know, if I'll go here. So guys, let's suppose I have this panorama and I have these firewalls, right? Let me use this color here. I have these firewalls. And I have this particular panorama, right? So guys, always remember your firewalls, these firewalls, they act as a client. This panorama act as a server. So when we will start managing these firewalls through this panorama, what used to happen all these firewalls, they used to communicate with this panorama with using the port number 3978 means 3978 port is opened here on panorama it will basically start listening on port number 3978 so this is the port which is used by the used for the communication between your firewalls and panorama and how you will verify there is a one command if you will run this command so devices all so this command will tell you if your devices is connected with the panorama or not. And that second command, so when you will run this command, you will get the IP address of your firewall. This is the IP address of my connected firewall. Now I'll go here and I run this command. So netstat numeric, yes, match, and the IP address. And you can check out here. This is the IP address of my firewall. From the firewall, it has used this particular port 43194, which is just a random port, but at the panorama end. See, this is the IP address of panorama, and port number is 3978. So, this is the guy's port number used by the firewall and panorama for the communication purpose. Just remember. Now, there is a one more port which is used by the firewalls and panorama for the communication purpose, which is 28443. Anyone know what is the use of this particular port? What you will guess here? Let me just open this diagram. Now, guys, we know 3978 used for the communication between this firewalls and this panorama not for HA, not for the encryption, not for the locks. Now what left guys? Not for locks management. Yes, I got the answer from JS. This port is used for your software and content updates. 28443, just remember this particular port number, okay? So guys in interview generally, I have seen people able to answer the port number, which is 3978, but they are not able to answer the port number, which is 28443. And Sam, this port is not for the SysD. SysD system daemon use the port number 28260, okay? Just remember. What is the port number used for the communication between panorama and lock collectors? They will also use the same port. 
थ्री नाइन सेवन एट नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड हेयर सो गाइज बिकॉज यू नो वेन वी विल कन्वर्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर पेनोरोमा इन अ लॉगर मोड इफ यू विल कन्वर्ट दिस पेनोरोमा दीज पेनोरोमाज एज इन अ लॉक कलेक्टर मोड विच मीन्स if you want to manage the configuration because you know when you will convert the panorama in lock collector mode you will only able to access this by a cli and we will do the config all type of configuration management of these lock collectors through this panorama the main panorama okay now this this panorama as i have told you act as a server now this lock collector panorama act as a server and client both so if the communication is happening between this lock collector and this panorama that time lock collector as act as a client and this panorama act as a server but when this firewalls they will communicate with these lock collectors that time your firewall act as a client and that time this lock collector act as a server so lock collector panorama can act as server and client basically just remember and here they will use the port number 3978 for the communication purpose just remember now what is the port number used for the communication between lock collector to lock collector because you know guys if you will see this diagram here we have a two lock collectors right because you know let's suppose here you are having around 20 devices and they are sending so many locks in that case to manage all the locks which is coming from these 20 devices we have to put here maybe one lock collector maybe two lock collector maybe three means we have to put a lock collectors in a group and this thing is known as lock collector groups basically this is known as lock collector groups and guys these lock collectors groups they will also communicate with each other just for the synchronization purpose just for the synchronization purpose right on which port they will communicate they will communicate on port number which is 28270 just remember now guys so these are the 15 question which i am targeting for you today's class okay now the remaining question how to add firewalls into the panorama what is secure communication in panorama so remaining 15 questions i will try to cover in your next class meanwhile let me just tell you some other information regarding the learn parallel to learning path okay so it will take hardly 10 minutes to complete